الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والتابعين إلى مدين أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء ونعوذ بك يا ربي من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن عين لا تدمع ومن نفس لا تجبع ومن دعاء لا يستجاب له آمين يا رب العالمين اللهم ألهمنا وسددنا اللهم ألهمنا رجدنا وقنا شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا وأتمم علينا نعمك ظاهرة وباطنة واسترنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك اللهم يا بر يا رحيم يا حنان يا منان يا بديع السماوات والأرض يا أكرم الأكرمين ويا أرحم الراحمين اهدنا واجبرنا وعافنا وارحمنا واكرمنا ولا تهنا أعزنا ولا تذلنا كن معنا ولا تكن علينا انصر بنا ولا تنصر علينا انكر لنا ولا تمكر علينا ارض عنا ولا تغضب علينا أعزنا ولا تذلنا يا رب العالمين افتح علينا فتح العارفين وأكرمنا وأنت أكرم الأكرمين وارض عنا يا ربنا يا إلهنا يا مولانا نعم المولى ونعم النصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Today the topic will be the right of Allah and the right of people, which in Arabic حق الله وحق العباد. Everything has a right because if you listen to us last week or the week before about amana. This life is amana, is a trust. Everything in this life is a trust. Your life is a trust. Your time is a trust. Your money is a trust. Everything you have is a trust. Your thinking, your thought, your feeling. And you will be questioned about it. How we fulfill the trust? To fulfill the trust... You have to go back to be a believer. If you are a believer, you will put everything in the right perspective. And when a situation arises, you will deal with it according to what Allah wants. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us two things can be against us. What is that? The feeling and the brain, the intellect. By this way, when a situation arises, either we deal with it according to my feeling or I deal with it according to my intellect. Meaning either I use my mind and judge it accordingly or I use it according to my feeling. And believe it or not, both of them can be wrong. What Allah want? If we want Allah, and if we belong to Allah, Allah will inspire us. He will guide us. And now my feeling and my intellect is governed by whom? By Allah. And this is what called taqwa, which in English they translate it as fear of Allah. But it's much greater than that, 
and we'll talk about it. This while Imam Shafi'i he said the most precious things is three. The most precious things is three. To be generous even if you not have too much. To be generous even if you do not have too much. الجود من قلة والورع من خلوة وكلمة الحق عند من يرجع أن يقال and to be alert what you doing when you alone when you alone with nobody see you what you doing what you doing what you thinking about it this is very big And the right word, justice. In a situation, you scare. If you say the truth, you will be killed or something happened to you. Sometime today, we teach our kids the opposite. You find out we gear to what? Love yourself, honor yourself, everything yourself, to the point it becomes so arrogant. And when the situation rises, we cannot be generous because we become selfish. And when we're alone, we become weak. We do whatever we want, even if it's haram. And in a time of dispute or something, we cannot stand for the truth. You see this a lot. I see it a lot when family member has a problem. And you find, for example, the husband commits something wrong, and the wife support, because just a wife. Even if he's a criminal, no, no, my husband is—he never commit anything. You see, or a mother and daughter, or son, or the opposite. Why is we do not have loyalty to Allah? We do not have loyalty to Iman. We always have loyalty and body body with each other. For just feeling or emotion or intellect, lack of justice. By this way, this iman who generate the taqwa, it generates something so beautiful. It make me alert. In every aspect in my life, and this alert, it make me put everything in the right perspective. According to whom, Allah. We will talk about it. Let's see, insha'Allah, how we can do that, which is not easy, really. If you ask me today, it's not easy. Why is that easy? The nafs is high. The nafs is high. When the nafs is high, what does it mean? The nafs become reined by its own. When the nafs is high, it becomes rain by its own. But when the nafs is low, it's rain and governed by Allah. Huge difference. By this way, every situation having what Allah can be pleased with, what I can do to please Allah, what I can do, you see, it's not me, it's not my nafs. This talk is easy. It's very easy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
He said to Mu'az ibn Jabal, this hadith reported on Abi Dhar, Jundub ibn Junada, wa Abi Abdul Rahman, Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhuma, an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, اتَّقِلَّهَ حَيْثُمَا كُنْ Have fear wherever where you are. وَاتَّبِعَ السَّيِّئَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ تَمْحُوهَا And follow the bad deed with a good deed. It will erase it. وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ And deal with people with a good manner. By this way, we have three elements. Have taqwa, wherever you go, wherever you are. And always try to do good deed as soon as possible. Because this will erase your bad deed. And have good manner. Some people consider this wasiyah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a comprehensive wasiyah. Why? It containing everything. It containing the element of success in this life and hereafter. You remember when we talk about the door of happiness and the keys of happiness? I was wishing to elaborate about that. Because you are hand to hand. How many of us, in any situation, we ask ourselves, what I should say, what I should do to please Allah? What I should say, what I should do to make Allah happy? What I should say, what I should do to gain Jannah? What I should say, what I should do to protect myself from Jahannam. Right now we're sitting, all of us, MashaAllah, we listen. Let any situation happen containing emotion involved or intellect involved. Oh, no, 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 I can't. And all of a sudden the emotion take over and we become emotion freak. And we will deal the situation according to what? Emotion. Or we using our mind. Like one sister, she sent me a report from Hindustan newspaper about this wedding stopped and the marriage stopped because the family member is spending biryani and the man do not like it. That's it. You see, a meal, a meal. Allah knows what kind of biryani. Is chicken biryani or mutton biryani? But imagine you die and you're standing in the front of Allah and you're causing mischief. Why? Because one biryani. Or a piece of cake. Or he said, or she said, Believe me, this topic scare me today. Wallahi, it scare me. And we find out some time when shaitan take over, shaitan do create thing for you, one after another, one after another, one after And you keep going, 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 non-stop. And you cannot see. Even if I tell you, you do you see? You said, you see. Be careful. No, you be careful. And is not ending. But as we talk about it today, it's easy. This is why I tell people, seeking knowledge is easy. Learning knowledge is easy. Comprehending knowledge is easy. Develop the quality of the knowledge is very difficult. To live with the quality is not easy. How many of us ask themselves, how many bad habits I broke from last year? 
how many people close by to you, they said you change, you become different. How many situations you should behave in a certain way and you capture your nafs to do otherwise? How many times you sit down alone and you said, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like? How many times in a dispute or a situation you said, let me think, is this according to me? or according to my emotion, or according to Allah, which one? This is not easy. And this will generate the right of Allah and the right of Ibadullah. This is why in Surah Al-Imran, verse 102, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. This verse a lot of scholar repeated before Juma and before marriage because it's containing the fear of Allah. Believe it or not, this verse has been revealed in a time in Medina. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wake up, when the companion was making a lot of noise, I wonder what happened. It was a dispute between Muhajirin, the immigrator, and Ansar, the supporter. I'm not going to go to the story now, but the bottom line, they disputed who is the best among them. Is this so-and-so or so-and-so? This so-and-so and so-and-so. And all of a sudden, the dispute becoming argue, the argue become a little bit raised voices to the point they're ready to fight. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, came down from Allah with this verse. This is why you say, you find out this very amazing verse. Ya ayyuha ladina amanu. Or you believe. Ittaqu Allah. Have taqwa. Haqqa tuqatihi. The right. Taqwa. ولا تموتن and don't die unless you are in a state of Islam. Why? Because if two Muslims fighting each other, they die as a non-Muslim. How many times today we fighting each other as a member of the family? We argue. We carry dirt in our heart against the member. And shaitan make it decorated, but you know something? I didn't say it, she said it. She did this to me. You remember the way she looked at me? I cannot take it anymore. And all of a sudden, one look, one word, one action, it gives me the right even to hate my own sister, to hate my own whatever, my own brother. And you find a lot of dispute in the family. A lot of dispute and division and this and that. What left? I give you a sword. I give her a sword. We kill each other. He said, oh, brother, no, 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 not this much. Believe me, today we do. We do. We have some time ugly hate for each other. Sister and sister, brother and brother, mother and son, son and father. We are so divided. Where it's coming from? Nafs. Nafs is high. And we lose the right of each other. And it's very simple. If you lose the right of Allah inside your heart, you'll lose the right of me. You lose the right of neighbor. You have no consideration. You will do whatever you want. And shaitan decorated it to you, and that's it. And Surah An-Nisa, chapter An-Nisa, verse 131. وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his wasiyya to the people before us and us, اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ 
actually when you study verb taqwa taqwa shay meaning to protect yourself from it to the point the wall around a garden to protect the garden they used to call it a way of taqwa because it protect the garden now how we do that sometime Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned us taqwa to protect us by action meaning fear Allah from such and such and sometimes just relate to Allah like verse al-ma'idah chapter al-ma'idah verse 96 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Fear Allah is the one you're going to be resurrected to him. وَيُحَزِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ أَلَى أَمْرَانَ verse 28 Allah warn you about himself. هو أهل التقوى وأهل المغفرة سورة المدثر verse 56 By this way, Allah warning us, the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their emotion was governed by taqwa Allah. They love, they feel, they fear is all generated from the love of Allah and the fear of Allah. By this way, any emotion, any feeling, any love, is rooted to Allah and any fear from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you have that the rest is easy very easy and again if you listen to me for years now you find the roots of all this Iman if you remember who's Allah the Qudra of Allah, the ability of Allah, the might of Allah, and you're going to die, and you might die tonight, what will happen? Our action completely different. But can I make you alert about something? I see you blind. This is a tough one. For example, you are my sister, or my brother, or a member of the family, and you're causing harm to me. I'm very upset. I'm very angry. How I deal with you according to Allah? I can't. But before I reach this level, if I have Iman, my Iman will govern me. I want to be angry. How I control, control my anger. I won't hate you. I cannot hate you. You see? I won't be upset with you. I can't. Now, who's fighting who? Is me. I have to fight myself first. This fight within is taqwa. If Iman win, it is taqwa. If Iman lose, it is nafs. But can I make you comprehend in a time of shayateen? No. Can I let you see if you're blind? No. No. But the tough part, how I can deal with you, 
Shaitan will kill you. You know something? She's wrong. She's wrong. She deserves it. Give it to her. Give it, give it to her. Shaitan will not tell you be angry at her. Forgive is very difficult. Treat you with nice and kindness for Sabila is very difficult. Wallahi is difficult. This talk now in this scenario, how many of us when a situation arises, we can handle it and do it? How many of us said, okay, you know something? She win. She insult me. And I know she's wrong. But I would forgive her and be kind for her only for Sabilillah. Do I have to come and tell you, listen, I'm kind, my iman is alive. I forgive you for Sabilillah. What are you doing? You are the wrong. What are you talking about? And, okay, I'm not going to forgive you. I'm going to kill you. First, we, our iman is very weak. And our quality is so weak. I'm willing to, ex to exercise my Iman and deal with you from Iman and Taqwa maybe in 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And once you open my mouth against me, my emotions take over, my nerves take over, and the fight starts. What do you think? Did this sound uh, familiar to you? Huh? Apply it in a time of pain. Disease, calamity, hardship, things we do not like. I do not get what I like. Wallahi, people. Wallahi. Iman and taqwa today is very difficult. It's very difficult. Why? The nafs is high. The nafs is very high. And today, instead of we are governed by Allah, supposed to be, as a mu'min, we govern by our nafs and our arrogance. And this why everything, no, no, yes, no, no, yes, no. Everything, yes and no. I know people, you know, word no and yes is very common in their mouths. To the point you find out underneath it is empty, is rhetoric. If the person think about why yes, why no, you find out there's nothing. It's just a nafs. Feeding your nafs. And the more you're feeding your nafs, you're not going anywhere. You're destroying yourself. And this is why you cannot obey. You cannot obey. You cannot obey. You cannot be even good to yourself. Imagine you cannot be good to yourself. If you cannot be good to yourself, how you can be good to others? How? It will never be. If you lost your own personal fight between you and yourself, when a time comes, no relationship can be perfect. Nobody is perfect. We're full of mistakes. We cannot take it. I look to myself and other. And I find out our Iman is a layer, very thin layer. When a situation arises, that's it. Bye-bye Iman, bye-bye journey of Iman, bye-bye quality. And again, don't go too far internal with family. With family inside the house. is no house has tranquility today, very rare. Why? Because we have no tranquility within. If I have tranquility within, I will share with you tranquility. If I have peace within, I share with you peace. What happens if I have it, but it's very small? Again, like I tell you, I will deal with you, with Iman, with strong quality, with peace. Only two or three minutes, five minutes. And after five minutes, listen, I was nice to you. What do you want? I was nice for five minutes. You want me to be five? 
nights for six minutes? Are you crazy? My email is very little. I, I give you good quality for five minutes. You don't deserve more than five minutes. Some people even say it. Oh, brother, five minutes is too long. I only have good quality for two minutes. What, what are you talking about? I see it even between husband and wife, daughter and mother. Excuse me, I was too nice for me. time. What do you want? I cannot be nice all the time. You want me to be nice? I'm not stupid. But I swear, be nice is stupid. It's, wallah, I'm, I'm trying to be practical. You know? What's the subject to me? You know? I hate to be nice. People take advantage of me because I'm too nice. Okay? I tell her very simple. Be nasty. She said, I wish to be nasty. I don't know how to be nasty, but I want to be nasty. And sometimes people who talk like that, they become nasty and they don't see it. Some people can say, you know something? I am so good. I am so good, but nobody know. And they sit in a room, dream about they are so good. And wonder what happens. They have no quality. And once you deal with them, they do not have it. They do not have it. Do A. Why A? Why we cannot do B? I don't like A. Someone rings the bell. And you find it was eating, was living, was any style, debating. And debating, end up with argue. Argue, debating with injustice. Injustice, the nafs is high. The fight is start. Allahu Akbar. And no ending. And here is a practical question. Oh, brother, I try to be nice. People take advantage of me. And they make me look like a fool. What to do? Well, this way, the heart of the taqwa is the alert of iman. And this alert of iman will give me the respect of Allah. And I know every action is accountable. And how I please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain his jannah and how to protect myself from the anger of Allah to protect myself from jannah this talk is easy you read it in books you know it but what it need it need a constant reminder and a constant fight is a fight is really a fight is a fight Either you win or your shaitan win. The problem with us, we always think, I do not want to lose. If I be nice, I'm a loser. Take people take advantage of me. This is the way we grow up. We grow up with no sense of forgiveness, no sense of let it go, no sense to be good for Sabilillah. And the meaning of life is different completely. To the point the nafs become high and everything according to me. And when the time coming to do anything, I cannot obey. I can't. Because the nafs is too high. The nafs is too high. The nafs is too high to the point I'm destroying myself. I'm losing my time. I'm losing my soul. I'm losing everything good. Because the early people used to say, you will never achieve goodness in this life until you take your nafs, put it underneath your feet. What it mean? Humble yourself. Humble and humility is not a talk. Is not a talk. And in meantime, they said, the ultimate elevation, if you like to elevate yourself to dunya and akhirah, humble yourself to other. 
والله I'm talking to you and it's not easy والله is not easy because you find everything Allah want us to do is against our nafs for example you did something to me I really want to smack you so hard this what I like this my nafs tell me you deserve it you deserve she, you, you have give it to her this is what I like. But to forgive is not easy. And shaitan tell you, you know something, you stupid idiot. The more you forgive, the more she becomes nasty. And the more she makes nasty, you have to forgive. Why you forgive all the time? Give it to her. You see? And because our nafs is very high, and our iman is very weak, like I tell you, we can be only good one time, one time and a half. You want me to be good time two times? Two? It's too much. We calculate how many times we're good. I heard it. Wallahi, I heard it many times. You know, I'm good many times. You want me to be good one more time? Are you crazy? No more. I'm not going to be good anymore. Imagine like goodness become evils and evil become good. But shaitan do not tell you evil. No. He tell you, you know, you're weak. People take advantage. You're so good. You're so good to be true. You have to be nasty. You cannot be good sometimes. No, no, no. You cannot. And all of a sudden you forget the principle of Iman. If I die today and I'm nasty, I go to Allah and say, Allah, I'm trying to be nasty today because, because, because of what? If I'm dealing with Allah, think, if I'm going to be nasty today, let's examine it. I'm going to be nasty today for what? Because you deserve it. Yes, you deserve it. Okay, you deserve it, but is this what Allah wants me to do? First of all, when you really have Iman, and you put everything in the right perspective, you will find the answer. And let me give you bad news again. The answer against your nafs. Always the answer against your nafs. And the only way to be elevated do the opposite of your nafs. Some people do not like take a shower. Take a shower. Some people want to sleep in a certain way. Sleep in a different way. Some people want to eat certain food. Don't, don't eat it. This topic is easy. No, it's not easy. It's not easy. All of us will become a slave of habits. To the point our habit is more stronger than our journey of Iman. Is more stronger than our, our goodness. To the point we cannot listen to the right advice in the right time. Everything has to be according to me. Everything according to me. Me, 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 me. me. Really? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. By this way, this topic is a fight, is a مجاهدة, is a struggle. One has to win. If you put your nafs under your feet, you win. If you put your nafs above your head, you lose. One of the early people, his name is Yahya ibn Mu'az al-Razi. He said, Amalun kal sarab. A deed like miraj. Nothing. Wa qalbun min al-taqwa harab. And heart empty from taqwa. Wa dhunubun ba'adad al-rimal. And sins in the amount of dust and sand. 
and after that you're seeking Zahur al Ain and the high level of Jannah. Hey hat, hey hat. Ho ho ho. And the Sakran on the Gayre Sharab. You are drunk, but without no alcohol. You are drunk, but without no drinking. A lot of us, believe it or not, we're acting like a big drunk. If we sit now to next to a drunk, he said, get up, you're too drunk. Really? Because a drunk person who keep going and doing the same thing over and over, he's drunk, he's not aware. And this is what's happening to us when the Iman is so weak. We follow our desire and habit to the point, we're not alert. ما أكملك لو بدرت أملك. How strong you are if you start controlling your nafs and how bitter for you if you do that before you die and how powerful you are if you deny your hawa, your desire. How many of us acting like a child? If you don't give him what he wants, he starts, you know, getting angry and getting moody. I want what I want, and if I do not get what I want, Allahu Akbar. Again, the quality of children, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He warning us in Surah Al Imran, verse one thirty one, Surah Al Baqarah. 281 and he tell you fear Allah the one you're going back to him and there's a lot of verses about that in Surah Al-Baqarah 124 Allah give us the quality of the people Surah Al-Baqarah again verse 177 when he said it's not al bir you know some people think the goodness is some rule and some regulation. No. Look at this verse. ولكن البر, the goodness, من آمن بالله, who believe in Allah, واليوم الآخر, and the hereafter. But you see, today all of us said, I believe in the hereafter. If you believe in the hereafter, how you behave today? Believe me, I'm talking to you right now. And I'm stuck too. I'm stuck. I have many situations with many people very close to me. And they're very nasty to me. And they lie. They cheat. They call names. They call me names. And my nafs tell me, you know something? Be quiet. Give them adab. Let them realize their mistakes. And the more I do that, I find out they become more arrogant, more stubborn, and more nasty to me. Why? This is not the teaching of Allah wa Rasul. I have to forgive. I have to. Shaitan come to me and tell me, you know something? How many times you did it? You did it many times. This will not be the last. It will increase again and again and again. If I have Iman, I said, I don't care, even if it's 100 times. If my nafs, no, 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 it's too much, too much. I did it many times. Enough is enough. But that's why the Iman always lead you to forgive, be kind, be good. This why when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, nothing is bitter to the son of Adam. Nothing is more weighty in a scale of the Day of Judgment than a moment of anger. A moment of anger. You swallow it. You swallow it. You know, Rasulullah, he used the word, swallow it. For Sabilillah. You know, I'm going to... I'm not going to give it to you. 
you guys lucky because we are over a sky. Legend in the front and my nerves go high. No, 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 forgive me. I don't need it. I forgive. This is not easy. Wallahi is not easy. Even if you try to now think about an incident in your life now and you want to forgive. Uh, imagine forgiving is difficult. Wallahi is difficult. Let it go is difficult. Some of you, I was worried about it. Some of you, I was worried about them. And now, alhamdulillah, I see some smile. The smile was hidden and was gone for a long time. And the face was dark. Why? When you carry anger, when you carry envy or jealousy or something or hurt or this or that to someone, it will not destroy except one. Who's that? Me. And once I relieve myself from all that, I, you see what I use the word? Relief. These people use it when you go to the bathroom. I'm going to relieve myself. But believe me, I, 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 know, I know what I mean. If you relieve yourself and you release yourself from all this, your face become light, calm. And obedience to Allah become a pleasure. In the beginning is difficult. After a while become pleasure. And after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala switched it to you. If you learn how to do that, wallahi, wallahi, you will feel unbelievable joy. Winning is a disgrace. To let the nafs win is a disgrace. It makes you humiliated inside. Even if you win. And you walk with arrogance and anger and, and it hurt. Imagine. But forgiving and humble, it gives you ease, release, relief. This is why I'm not joking. I mean it. We're walking today like people have a constipation for three, four days and stuck. <laughs> what happened to you? I'm stuck. I cannot go to the bathroom. Imagine now when we carry not constipation for three days, for three months, for one year. Some people, I cannot talk to her. I cannot, I cannot, I don't talk to her for a year. Why? I'm so angry. You do not know what she did. You do not know what she did. But what we did to each other, right or wrong, this part of the trial, I will never be wrong to you without the will of Allah. By this way, if you wrong to me, meaning a trial to me, you get it or no? Hello? Are you thinking or your mind have conservation too? Because believe it or not, when you're really stuck, you're really stuck. A heart and a mind can have a big constipation and you cannot release. Imagine I'm using this word and people can be laughing. No. Ask anybody who have constipation for a week and they really want to go. How do they feel? They become cranky. They become very uptight. The body is heavy. They wish to be relieved, but they can't. Similar. If the soul is stuck and it carry hurt or anger or some negative feeling to someone, wallahi, it make you very uptight. Very uptight. You know, I cannot take it anymore. And the moment you relief and you let it go, you live in peace and tranquility. And reflect over your face. It reflects over your style of life. 
But don't do it and complain. There's another thing. Our nafs is so high. I obey you, I forgive you. Five minutes. You know something? It's too much, but I did it. You know? And all of a sudden, we're blaming ourselves for forgiveness. Like, I want to get angry again. Imagine, and the shaitan keep playing with me. I forgive you, but I'm angry, I'm angry, I forgive you, I forgive you, I'm angry, I'm angry, I forgive you. No ending. Angry is, is ugly. Wallahi is ugly. Very ugly. Hurt and all this, what call, you see shaitan decorated for you, he hurt you. You do not know, he hurt you. He doesn't care about you. By the way, the shaitan wants you to get angry. But doesn't mean to be naive. And for example, a, shaita, uh, a thief steals money from me and I get upset with this a thief. And I go to the same thief, I said, I forgive you. Put your hand in my bucket again. We love to do that. We love to try to be good to the wrong people. To the wrong cause. People who destroy us. No. That's not forgiveness. You are naive. You're stupid. You have no iman. The mu'min al kayis fatin. Mu'min he know. The mu'min will not be bit from the same cave twice. Today we go, Ay! One time, two time, three time, ten time. Allahu Akbar. Go snake. Kill me, kill me, kill me. Kill me, no problem. I'm coming. Why? The blindness of the heart. Because all this feeling of anger and upsetness and this and that, it generates blindness. We cannot see the truth. And shaitan make me tint it, the zulm. That's Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, what he said, he said, in the day of judgment, Allah said, where is the muttaqoon? Where is the people with taqwa? And the kitab to be belong to Allah. When you study, don't ever forget that. Iman has a quality. You can learn, 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 read, learn, learn, read, no. Unless you have a quality. Quality. This whole quality coming from what? For example, generosity is a quality. To be good is a quality. To be good hearted is a quality. To forgive is a quality. To be patient is a quality. And now, do you want to carry a bunch of good quality? Or you want to hold in bad quality? You want to be famous with good quality or you want to be famous with bad quality? And remember, once you die, people will remember you either with good quality or bad quality. How many times you wash yourself? How many times you are clean and full of fragrance? Because the soul is part of your body. If your body smells good, your soul is good. If your body stink, your soul stink. I'm not kidding. It's big. Everything is so close and tied together. One of the early people, he said something so beautiful when they asked him about taqwa. He said, taqwa, to do according to the obedience of Allah. To do according to the obedience of Allah. By the nur of Allah. And to gain or to seek the pleasure of Allah. And to leave the sins for sabilillah. Fearing from Allah with the light from Allah. 
When Allah give you light, this light allow you to see the truth. And when Allah allow you to see the truth, you follow it. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu he said something very tough, very tough. When I was reading it, it's very tough. He said, what is tamam taqwa What is the complete taqwa? The perfect taqwa. He said, to have taqwa, until you have taqwa in every autumn of, of thinking and your action, every autumn. Until you leave what suspicion, even if it's halal. Until you have a veil between halal and haram. And after that, he recite Surah Al-Zalzala 7 and 8. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَى Whoever do an atom of a good deed, he will see it. Whoever do an atom of a bad deed, he will see it. And after that, he continue. Don't underestimate anything. Again, this talk is easy. To sit down and listen is easy. To put it in practice. When you sit down now and listening, how many of you is released already? How many of you can say, okay, I forgive so and so and so and so and so and so, and I will go to them and ask them to forgive me, and I clean my heart. How many of you can do that today? Huh? Oh, brother, it's very difficult. Wallahi, I know it. I'm with you. I'm talking now, and I have too many issues. It's very difficult. Our Iman is very weak. But you have to fight it. Remember, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this topic. He said, nothing can elevate you better than a state of anger. You let it go for sabilillah. The more you forgive, the more Allah will elevate you. Remember, this knowledge, what is the power of knowledge? Live it. Live it. Live it. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu in the verse of Quran, Taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi, which Allah Amran 102, he said, An yuta' fala yu'asa. To obey Allah, and you will not disobey Him. Wa yuzkar fala yunsa. To remember Allah, and do not forget Him. Wa an yushkar fala yukfar. And to thank Him, and don't be rebellious, do kufr. Remember, when you're rebellious, you are in a state of kufr. You know, literally, I'm suffering. You know, this topic, when you somebody do something wrong against you, and you try to forgive, do you know what it do? It make you lose the time of zikr. You try to do zikr Allah, but all of a sudden you find yourself 10, 15 minutes, and he said, she said, he said, she said, well, but I, <laughs> and all of a sudden, 15, 20 minutes is gone. What happened for half an hour? You're thinking about so and so bad deed to you, or what they did, and you lost the Allah, and you lost thanking Allah, you lost contentment, you lost your Iman, all that because you did. Imagine, imagine how stupid we are, shaitan win. 
please make dua for yourself, make dua for everybody. What kind of dua? Oh Allah, allow us to gain your light. Allow us to gain your guidance and make us live according to your guidance and your light, Ya Allah. And give us the humble and humility to allow us to obey you only, Ya Allah. And do whatever please you, Ya Allah. And O oh Allah, give us victory against our nafs. Give us victory against our ego, our arrogance. Make us humble to you, Ya Allah. Make us humble to you, Ya Allah. Make us humble to you, Ya Allah. What is the root of taqwa? Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The roots of taqwa. Somebody said, the root of taqwa to know what you have to do. And you learn it, and you do. Meaning you know what you should not do. And what you should do. And you follow what you should do, and you get away from what you should not do. And one person, he said, how you can have taqwa if you do not know? Meaning, if you're ignorant, you cannot do it. Like one time I was talking to like that, and one sister, she told me, Shh, I'm leaving. I said, why? She said, I cannot take it. I don't want knowledge. I cannot do. Why is better not to learn? You see how shaitan do? One time I give her one sister a book. She tell me, you know something? I'm not going to read it. I said, why? Because if I read it, I know. If I know, I have to do. And I'm not ready. I'm not going to read it. Look at shaitan, how he decorates things. And the way she argue is so beautiful, full of wisdom. Because shaitan will not tell you, stupid idiot, don't do. No. I tell you, intelligent. Don't read. If you're not reading, you're not accountable. Stay ignorant, you know? Stay ignorant. Similar, the person who will not wash himself, okay, save water, save water, save water, save the earth, stay stink, don't worry about it. You know? Why is spending money and soap? It doesn't matter. One shower a day, one shower a week, no problem. If somebody not like you, stink, no problem. This is his fault. By the way, shaitan will not make you to your own. No, he always decorated for you. And you forget the basic. We're supposed to be clean. Similar to anger. Similar to every aspect. Knowledge. Knowledge. And follow the knowledge, not follow your nafs. And we are in a time, very soon, either we follow wrong, we follow somebody's wrong, we follow ourselves wrong, and we'll be sliding in a fitna. By the way, the taqwa Allah, give me nur, give me guidance. It save me and guard me from myself and other, and allow me to know what to do and not to do. This is why mandatory in Islam to seek knowledge. Because the more knowledge we have, the more we know what to do and not to do. But again, if the Iman is alive, and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and a companion and early tabi'een, every time they start speech, they start with taqwa Allah. Always. In Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter Al-Anbiya, verse 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
you talk about the people of goodness and the family of prophets and messengers in the general. They used to run and rush to do good deed. And they make dua from the respect and fear of Allah. And they make dua to seek the generosity of Allah. And they used to have khushu'a. What is khushu'a? Khushu'a. How I can explain it? You know when you have a, when you really have two things in one, you worry about losing a job or losing something, and you wishing to gain it. It break you inside. It give you this khushu'a. You're not arrogant. You have no ego. You're broken. And this why. If you do not gain humble and humility and Allah love you, Allah give you calamity after a calamity to teach you humble and humility. You see? Because every calamity and hardship or disease or anything is to generate a quality we're missing. That's why either you go to Allah peaceful or he will get you his own way. How many times I used to tell you guys this uh, sentence? Go to Allah peaceful. Because if He chooses you, He will get you. How many people said, Oh brother, for five years now, calamity after calamity. What do you want me to do? Meaning something we did not do it right. Meaning you're still arrogant and stubborn about something. Once you live Iman, Allah will open for you and nothing will bother you. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he used to do? He used to make his dua, Allahumma inni as'alaka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-ifatu wa al-ghina. Allahumma inni as'alaka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-ifatu wa al-ghina. Oh Allah, I seek you and I seek from you the guidance and taqwa al to be pure-handed, not seeking anybody help. But does it mean I stay home until I die and say I'm not going to ask anybody? This has a fiqh. wal to be rich. And rich in here is the status of the heart. And the status of Allah will give you sufficient enough. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained what we said in one word. Have taqwa anywhere you go. And this is why Rasulullah used to say, أَسْأَلُكَ خَشْيَتَكَ فِي الْغَيْبُ وَالشَّهَادَةِ I, Allah, I ask you to give me the fear of you and respect you in the seen and unseen, meaning in the front of the people and when I'm alone. And this is why in Surah An-Nisa, chapter An-Nisa, verse 1, when people get married, the sheikh or scholar recited that وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَأَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا And have taqwa, the one who will ask you about everything, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Mulk, chapter Al-Mulk, verse 14, أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ Allah do not know, and He is Latif and Khabir. He knows the detail, the ultimate, inside our heart. And He all-knowing, all-aware about everything.
one man of the early people, he entered in a Khalifa. The Khalifa asked him, give me your advice. He said, yeah, Amir al-Mu'mineen, if you commit sins and you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you, you become arrogant against Allah. And if you think Allah is not watching you, you are a kafir with Allah. And he left. This why even the status of thinking, if I have a, a, a sixth thinking or a dirty thinking, I have to ask you myself, who know it now? Allah. One man in a desert, he meet a girl. He liked her. He said, me and you, buddy, buddy, and nobody see us except the stars. Meaning, let's do something now, you know. Nobody see it. Only the stars, me and you, and the stars. She says, where is the owner of the stars? Look at Iman. Look at Iman with his life. She said, where is the owner of the stars? The man feels shy and he left. And Al-Harith Al-Muhasabi, Al-Harith Al-Muhasabi is a scholar very famous by this topic. He said, to be aware and alert about your heart you have to know how close Allah to your heart. You get it or no? If you want to know the knowledge of muraqaba, watching Allah, be alert about how Allah is close to you. The noon, one of the early people, they said, one person asked him, how I gain Jannah? He said, you gain Jannah by five. You gain Jannah, paradise by five. One, to stay fast and don't do like the wolf. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Stay fast. Keep going. Two, wash the head, lay some Keep a struggle, fighting yourself, and don't let it go. Three, to remember Allah is watching you in the seen and unseen. Believe me, Wallahi is very difficult. We love to behave very beautiful in the front of each other. And once we alone, Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. Number four, and prepare yourself for death and think you're going to die tonight. This, believe me, is very beautiful. And five, and scale your deed before Allah will scale it against you. Abdullah ibn Dinar, one of the early tabi'in, he said, I went with Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. I went with Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar Khattab, to go to Hajj. And in the desert, we were thirsty. And he went and tried to check one shepherd. He took care about sheep. He said, oh man, sell me one of these sheep. He said, I don't own them. I only work. I cannot sell you something I do not own. 
He said, set your owner, one wolf, eat one sheep, no problem. Said to the owner, the, sheep, the wolf eat it. Not a big deal. He said, if I said that to my owner, what I'm going to say to Allah? Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, he started crying. He said, who is your owner? He said, so and so. He was a slave. He went and he bought him. And he make him free for sabilillah. By this way, to have this state of Iman and Taqwa, it gives you the alert and awareness and vigilante of your action. And now, to do good deed, it will erase your bad deed. And I do not want to take too much of your time and to deal with people with good manner. We can continue if I'm still alive next week. But remember, the two element of this wasiya, the pillar is what we saw, talk about. If your iman is alert, you're vigilant, you're aware, and you will deal with things accordingly. According to whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But if this is weak, the nafs take over, the emotion take over, the intellect take over, meaning shaitan will take over, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the quality to be a mu'min. May Allah give us the quality to be among the muttaqeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decorate us with the quality beloved to Allah wa Rasuluh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us istiqamah, steadfast, until we meet Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to fight our nafs and fight our temptation and our shayateen and to win the fight and give us humble and humility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decorate us with the quality and manner beloved to Allah wa Rasuluh. Oh Allah, we're so weak. Wallahi, ya Allah, we're so weak. Oh Allah, without you, we cannot go anywhere, ya Allah. Help us out. Look at our weakness, ya Allah, and support us. We do not have the right environment. We do not have the right company. Our nafs is so high. Our food halal and haram. Our companion is a mess. Our tongue full of backbiting and namima and ghayba. Our heart is not content and not thanking you. Oh Allah. Oh Allah. How we win, ya Allah. How we win, ya Allah. Cleanse our heart from the disease of the heart. Cleanse our tongue from backbiting other, ya Allah. And fill our heart with contentment and iman and thanking you, ya Allah. And make Allah, make us, ya Allah, have light and wisdom from you, ya Allah. And make us able to live according to your guidance and light and wisdom, ya Allah. Oh Allah, we're so weak, ya Allah. We beg you, Allah. Give us quality, ya Allah, before we die. Give us good deed accepted by you before we die. Give us, ya Allah, humility and quality to be famous with before we die. In the earth and the sky and your kingdom, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, snatch dunya out of our heart, Ya Allah. Cleanse our heart, Ya Allah, from envy, jealousy and everything, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, we beg you, Ya Allah. We cannot do it without you, Ya Allah. Give us useful knowledge and knowledge benefit us and to be witness to us, not against us, Ya Allah. Support us, Ya Allah, against all the shayateen. Al Insu al Jinnya Allah. O oh Allah, you are the only one. You guide whom you want. You give tawfiq to whom you want. 
and we beg you, Allah, without your guidance and tawfiq, we cannot do it, ya Allah. It's not us, ya Allah. We're so weak, ya Allah. We need your support. We need your support, ya Allah. Make all this knowledge beloved to us and give us the ability to live this knowledge, ya Allah. Give us sincerity. Give us truthfulness in everything we say and we do. In the seen and unseen, ya Allah. And make us having more taqwa in the unseen more than the seen, ya Allah. And make our life, ya Allah, benefit to us, ya Allah, to lead us to Jannah, ya Allah, to see your beautiful face, ya Allah. Oh Allah, we do not deserve it, ya Allah. We do not deserve it, but we seek your generosity, ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow us, ya Allah. Please, ya Allah, allow us, ya Allah. And if we're going to be fitna to other, or fitna to other, or spreading fitna, take us, ya Allah. Take us, ya Allah, before we're spreading fitna, ya Allah. Or causing fitna to other, ya Allah. Or be maftunin, ya Allah. O oh Allah, we beg you, ya Allah. We need you, ya Allah. We need you, ya Allah. Make us among the kareen, khashi'een, muttaqeen, sadiqeen, mu'mineen, mutawakkileen, wathiqeen. Amin, ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وحزبنا الله نعم الوكيل ونفوض أمرنا إلى الله إن الله رسم بالعباد make دعاء for yourself for the whole أمة the whole Ummah in crisis make dua and beg Allah to be the cause of elevating the deen of Allah, not the disgrace of the deen of Allah. Ameen, ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.